Hey guys, Namashwaya. I am Pallavi, a PhD research student working in Neuronal Drug Delivery Systems at Amrita Center for Nanosciences and Molecular Medicine. I've always loved learning. I've always been uh, very curious to figure out how things work, discovering new ideas, and, and thoroughly enjoyed the process of asking the right questions and trying to figure out the answers. And I feel, in a sense, I've grown a lot more from what I've learned. So when somebody asked me uh, why I ended up pursuing a PhD career in the field of molecular medicine, the answer frankly was quite natural and easy. It's something that I enjoy doing and it's something uh, that people around me support and invest in my research. So one of my uh, earliest memories uh, of being uh, of getting introduced to science or being a research scientist comes actually from my dad. So it's a me memory that really stands out and I thoroughly enjoyed in my childhood, uh, which was always during Diwali. So during Diwali, my dad used to take us out uh, into Bangalore city and we used to go around for an adventure. So he would always bribe me with the promise of getting an ice cream at the end of it. So basically, we used to travel uh, to Bangalore city and go up to different areas of Bangalore city and go up to these huge machines which would make a lot of noise. And we would write down data which actually pertain to air quality. All the while, I was holding this little machine that looks like a walkie-talkie and uh, that used to measure sound pressure levels. This was an adventure by itself, of course. And I always wondered, why are we doing this? How does it matter whether air quality or sound, how does it matter to us? Why are we be, being so boring? And, and why, are we, why aren't we celebrating Diwali like the rest of Bangalore? Why are these scientists roaming around and collecting data? That's really not important. But it was truly much later in life that I understood how valuable this real-time data actually is to scientists and researchers in this field and how it is really important to know uh, air quality and sound pollution levels which basically affects our life, our health and the environment. So another cool memory I have of my dad is when he was finally awarded his PhD degree. So I was about 10 years old and I thought it was the most coolest thing ever. So he had finished all his experiments and he had this big fat book uh, which, which was his PhD thesis. And suddenly uh, there were a lot of pictures, he had a medal and an award and, a, and, and something called it as a doctor attached to his name. So for me, as a 10 year old, that was the coolest thing I ever saw and I went around telling everybody about it. So naturally, when I thought about where I wanted to be in my career, I, I wanted to be a research scientist, somebody as cool as him. So I used to frequently visit their labs, meet with his colleagues and try to figure out what being a research scientist actually is like. And I understood that it took real passion, hard work and plenty of sacrifices. But it was all worth it because the science was so exciting. And over the years, I kind of worked with um, microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi, and I grew them on these petri plates, which was a pretty cool thing that, uh, pretty cool and something new that I had never done before. I had also worked with uh, trees, which are only found in uh, Western Ghats. And uh, since we were trying to figure out the distribution of these trees and its genetic sequences, I was tasked with finding the uh, isolating DNA. And I remember feeling so cool when I finally ran my first DNA isolation all alone in a room and I was successful. Uh, and something else that sealed the deal for me with research and being a research scientist was when I read, came across this book from uh, Dr. V. Ramachandran, uh, Phantoms in the Brain, which was just mind-blowing and I knew that if I was to be a scientist I would definitely be a neuroscientist and I would work no matter where I end up I would be working with neurons. At Amrita Nanoscience I work in cancer and pain research which is such a relevant field of science because cancer associated pain is connected to symptoms of anxiety, depression and insom insomnia. Advancements in the field of cancer therapy have made it possible for cancer patients to live longer. But adequate pain management is still lacking. So in lab, we try to address this issue by looking at the interaction between cancer cells and neurons in the context of bone cancer. 
specifically we try to identify uh, receptors found within the bone tissue which can be targeted and we try to look at the neural innervation within the bone and modulate the neural activity uh, locally. So I think finally under the research uh, guidance of my professor I think I finally started understanding what it really means to look at a problem, ask the right questions, spend hours looking at uh, literature and reading, uh, coming up with an hypothesis, uh, executing and designing an actual experiment, uh, getting the results and you know trying to sit for hours or sometimes even days just trying to figure out what that data means and finally coming to a conclusion and then starting the process of writing the actual research paper where we would actually publish our data and give it out to the real world for the next set of scientists to take it forward. So naturally I gained an immense respect for people in this profession because they dedicate so much of their time and energy into just figuring out how things work and because they are curious. But there was an issue. This was not related to science but this was something related to being a scientist especially the a one in my gender. So there were plenty of female friends around me when I first started out. But as I moved towards a higher degree, they started trickling down. So naturally it made me wonder, why was this happening? Why were women dropping out? So the issue I raise now is not something new. Even though the number of women uh, in science and engineering field is increasing, there is still a disparity. I believe the disparity in the science, technology, engineering and mathematics field uh, still exists because of our perceptions and unconscious belief in gender stereotypes. People to this day believe that men are more suited for these jobs. Science and math is considered as a men's field and women are pushed to arts and humanities. Interestingly, people also believe that girls aren't interested in science and they actively reroute their interest at a young age. For example, men, uh, young boys are allowed to play with construction sets and uh, Legos or building blocks which immensely help in uh, increasing your spatial skills, while girls aren't encouraged to do the same. Moreover, as we grow up, the STEM work, workforce or the workplace environment is pretty unfair to women and we severely lack role models. So only by accepting a problem do we actually start to dismantle it and only by accepting that there is a dearth of women in the STEM workforce will we be able to create solutions together to rectify the situation. And if you look at it, we have plenty of solutions. Uh, we as a society must rethink re-educate ourselves and shed our negative gender stereotypes. We need to inculcate a positive uh, growth mindset in young women and give them every opportunity to pursue science. And we must stop asking women to choose family and familial responsibilities over their own dreams and ambitions. Finally, I'd like to address every young girl or woman who are listening in to this talk and have a genuine interest in pursuing STEM field, you can do it. It is not easy, but nothing worth achieving is actually easy. You need, we need to put in hard work, long hours, and make plenty of sacrifices. And we need to start building an active support system, which will not put us down for choosing ourselves first. So in the words of Rosalind Yalo, uh, American biophysicist, who overcame class and gender prejudice, and went on to win the uh, Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine in 1977. She says, Women, we cannot expect in the immediate future that all women who seek it will achieve full equality of opportunity. But if we are to start moving towards that goal, we need to believe in ourselves or no one else will believe in us. We need to match our aspirations with competence, courage, and the determination to succeed. Thank you.